535 billion US dollars. That is the size of China's trade balance after exports grew in 2020, lifting its surplus to a five-year high. That despite the coronavirus pandemic and a trade war with the United States. In December, exports surged 18% on the previous year. Supply problems elsewhere helped boost demand for Chinese goods. China's robust recovery also drove domestic consumption of foreign products, with imports also beating expectations. Now, a report just released by the European Chamber in China implies that the Asian powerhouse has long managed its interdependence with the world economy in a highly strategic and limited manner. What does this mean for foreign companies operating there? Well, that's something I discussed earlier with Jörg Wuttke, president of the European Chamber in China. And I started by asking him if China was at all interested in being a team player in the global economy. Well, they're very interested to be a team player as long as everybody plays according to their rules, of course. Uh, I mean, the picture I always try to use is, is football. You know, their view on football is very different from ours. We think about continental soccer uh, with referees, and they have American football in mind with gear and pushing for yards. So it, it, we really need the U.S. and Europe to get together in order to make sure that China is a good team player, but according to international rules and not trying to set their own. Well, and until uh, we get uh, Europe and the US uh, together in order to join forces to achieve that, what are currently the main risks for European companies that are based in or having subs subs uh, subsidiaries in China? I mean, the risks are always, uh, of course, I mean, the average uh, risk is always the competition. Chinese companies get better. Uh, you have a very fast-changing uh, consumership. But what we are trying to outline in the decoupling story is that the new risk is supply chain. Uh, it is if the U.S. Uh, basically unplugs you on semiconductors, as happened to a European car company last month, they had to shut down two companies in uh, China and 10,000 cars got produced less. Uh, there is small items that actually can basically set you back, as well as software, so when you think you have a great supply chain here, our study is supposed to be a wake-up call telling people that software is possibly going to be a real challenge if the U.S. insists on the U.S. software, China insists on their software, and then all of a sudden you sit in between and you can't produce. So in a way, this study really is supposed to be showing that uh, uh, don't, don't be complacent. All right. Uh, I mean... How about this new European-China Comprehensive Agreement on Investment that has, uh, uh, just before uh, the last year ended, sort of been agreed upon? Uh, does this help? Well, I mean, we had seven years of negotiations, and I'm extremely grateful that this is now done. And uh, uh, as it looks like, we don't know the entirety of the text. Uh, it is uh, baby steps, but it's in the right direction. We are very happy that we can do a couple of things more, that the gap to the American phase one deal is shortened. But uh, again, in the in the magnitude of things, uh, particular uh, decoupling, uh, you don't fight uh, an amputation with a Band-Aid. So in a way, we need much, much more activity there. The investment agreement is good, but it's not going to swing the needle in the big picture. All right. We all know that China, of course, is this huge, huge market, and everybody uh, wants to to get part, have a part of that. Uh, the Trump administration certainly launched the U.S.-China trade war, but criticism on China existed way before, and it's likely to continue under the new U.S. president, won't it? Well, that's the unfortunate thing: is that it's bipartisan, and it's um, something that uh, is going to drive politicians. If you look into the rating of China in Europe, it went from 50, 60 percent positive 10 years ago to 78 percent negative uh, as of last year. So that gives a lot of uh, food for thought for our politicians to be either tough on China or nice to China. So China actually has a party in their own hands in order to uh, be actually accommodating, less assertive, wolf warriors, the word. Um, uh, but no, there, there, is, there is enough pushback, and I'm really worried about it. It looks to me like a slippery slope, and in our study, we really try to tell the government's fellows we need an exit ramp. We really uh, cannot go on uh, uh, like this. Uh, primarily, of course, we're aiming at uh, the Chinese government here, but it's also meant to be in the U.S. It's not. A, it's a grim picture, actually. All right. Jörg Wutke there, president of the European Chamber in China. Uh, thank you so much for your time. 
Thank you.